What are the most common types of virtual production shoots in film and TV? Hey, welcome back. Today, we're going to be diving into the fascinating world of LED virtual productions, a game changer in filmmaking that's revolutionizing how we create movies and TV shows today. So let's break down the different types of LED virtual productions and see how they are being used across Hollywood and TV productions. Ali. Okay, will you at least talk to me? I just think it's funny how you love oh, okay. being the backseat driver. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll shut up. First, we have video plates. This is the most traditional form of LED virtual production. Basically, it involves using pre-recorded 2D content that gets projected onto the LED screens to shoot car scenes driving within a neighborhood. This is mostly used for driving scenes, whereby a 360 camera rig is used to capture the driving scene of the street and then the entire videos are stitched together and projected on the LED wall. The car is placed in front of the LED wall with the actors and then it's filmed as if they were actually driving on the street. Meanwhile, they are just in the studio. Drive. This is a family emergency. I'm your family emergency now. Whatever it is that you want, it's yours. Is this the wife? David, where are you? For instance, the recent Nicolas Cage movie, Sympathy for the Devil, much of the film takes place inside a car, equating for more than a third of the movie's total screen time. Initially, the plan was to shoot these car scenes on real streets. However, Toronto Rains at their Las Vegas location disrupted these plans. The production team shifted to virtual production inside the View Virtual Studio in Las Vegas. The director, Yuva, and cinematographer Steve found that using View's LED volume provided better and more authentic visuals faster than the traditional on-road or green screen filming. You know, when we do car stuff, whether it's on process trailer or we're using things like the Russian arm, the reset time is significant. You need police, you need all kinds of bells and whistles. It's a nightmare. Just everybody goes to the other car and you have to drive them and then you lose connection. And I talk to the actors with the walkie talkie and they're like, what? I lost connection. And you can't have one shot a day. So I think honestly, if you're gonna ask me what the hardest thing was about this movie, it was the unpredictability of Vegas's weather in the summer. The LED volume allowed for genuine reflections on the car glass, enhancing the realism of the shots. With this method, the production team are able to maximize their time producing more scenes compared to the potentially just one shot using traditional methods. Aside just saving time, with this technique, the producers are also able to save costs. For example, when shooting a car scene on an active street would involve lots of protocols, security, um, blocking the entire street, that could take a whole lot of time to plan and also a lot of expenses involved in doing that. But in a virtual production studio, you have all the time and all the space to yourself. It's a great example of how video plates can adapt to changing circumstances and deliver stunning results. Next, we have virtual production using 3D game engines. This method is a bit more dynamic and interactive. It involves using real-time rendering engines like Unreal Engine or Unity 3D to create and control complex 3D environments. The technology lets filmmakers adjust the scenes, lighting, weather, and even geography on the fly. For a prime example, let's talk about the Mandalorian series. The producers used Unreal Engine to build immersive and detailed environments on their LED stages. The dynamic lighting and reflections provided by the game engine added a whole new level of realism that you couldn't just get with traditional green screen shoots. Also, this method is more effective than green screen shoots because the actors are able to react to what is there on the screen rather than on a green screen where they have to react to an imaginary space and objects within the scene. 
actors point at things and see what they're looking at was pretty transformative. It gave everybody context with the added benefit that if you want to move a mountain from there to there, you can do it instantly. This has also been used in several other shows and movies. For example, The Masters of the Air, Avatar, The Last Airbender, Tree Body Problem, and several others. Finally, we have XR or Extended Reality. XR combines virtual reality, augmented reality, and mixed reality to create immersive experiences that blend the digital and physical worlds together. This technique is mostly used in live events or broadcast setups, and the AR elements are mostly used to project graphics or interactive data. In XR, LED screens can be combined with AR elements to enhance the storytelling. This is gradually becoming popular in television broadcasting, most especially during US elections or every other elections around the world, or in weather reports. Think of it as the LED stage to the next level by adding interactive augmented layers. This process also utilizes game engines and other high-end live graphics softwares. There are several media servers or tools to achieve this. The most popular is this guy's media server, Zero Density, Stipland XR, and several other new tools out there in the market. And there you have it, a quick tour of different types of LED virtual productions and how they are being used in Hollywood cinema and in broadcasting from video plays to 3D game engines and XR. These technologies are pushing the boundaries of filmmaking. So do you have any questions about these filmmaking techniques? Let me know and I'll be happy to chat with you.